almost got me laid up in here. I'm all like, okay, we got one minute. Mm -hmm. Should I go throw on the uh, manatee? And Eric's like, yeah, you gotta. Definitely. You gotta throw on the manatee. I'm so glad he did. Look at this yeah. shirt. I know, right? Look at that. Be good, have fun, do it in that order. He did not give me it's one. Good advice. That's because I don't have anything in size beast. Oh, okay. This look at this. Like, <laughs> seriously, I want you to look at how much broader this guy is than me. I'm not sitting in his lap. Like, seriously, look at that. This guy is huge. <laughs> He's crazy. Huge. <laughs> It's insane. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to Man of Minutes. You are on the program today with my good friend, Mr. Eric Thorne. Hello. And today, somebody going to testify. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're talking about um, testifying today. And Eric has a very unique experience with this. So, um, Eric, tell us about family life. What's going on with you on the old home front? So I have four children, three sons and a daughter. I've Ooh. been, yeah, I've been married for, I think, nine years now. Yeah. But we've been together for 16. Woo. Yeah. So that's a, that's a long run. It's a very long run. I mean, for your age. I mean. Yeah. We got together when I was 15. So, wow. Yeah. It's been quite a while. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. So um, now you actually have a podcast going on. I do, yeah. yeah. So if you, you want tell to, us about that, if you want to check me out on, uh, go to my Facebook page, Eric Thorne with a K, because it is the best way. So, Eric, that's T H O R N K. No, oh. <laughs> e, e R I K. Got it. T H O R N E. Well, there you go. Somebody likes wasting vowels in their last name. Hey, and you too. <laughs> I've been told I'm a thorn in someone's side oh, before. Oh, gosh. Wow. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, it's interesting. You have a podcast, and we were talking a little bit about this before we hit the record button. Mm -hmm. But um, you get interrupted sometimes in your podcast. I do. I, was, I got real curious about that. I want to hear more yeah. about that. So, like I said, I have four children, and they like to come in at certain times and just get involved with the video there is no editing of it out <laughs> just kind of go with the flow sometimes there's masterpieces <laughs> sometimes my youngest son is just climbing on my head because he thinks i'm a jungle <laughs> he thinks i'm a jungle gym so hey i still stay focused on the conversation at hand and he just does his thing so, all boy, huh? All boy, okay. yeah. That, that, his name is Flex, by the way. We call him wow. Flex. Yeah. Now, um, do you have a, a theme song or anything for your podcast? I do not. I'm not as fancy as Dan. You know, there. a mutual friend of ours was, was supposed to deliver a theme song for me. Mm. Yeah. Do you, you want to hear a preview of it? I would love to. Good. Go ahead and sing it for us. Uh, how am I supposed to know what it oh. is? Oh, <laughs> okay, fine. I'll sing it for us. Yeah. So, um, it goes like this. Uh Sit down for a while, get a coffee and smile. Take a seat for a turn, take a minute to learn. Man of minutes. Oh. That's the first live performance. <laughs> That's a Martin Post theme song. Now, look, if you guys like that, I should see a like or something in the comments section right now. That was that was a thrilling performance. <laughs> I loved it. But we're going to get on to, um, so, you know, check out Eric's podcast. Uh, actually, I really like the idea of, you know, bringing the family in, getting the mm -hmm. family involved. I think that's incredible. But um, I want to talk about, now, people sitting here thinking, this guy must be a pastor. He must be a teacher. He must have been a Christian his whole life. Nope. But we need to set the record straight. All right. Tell me about the life so of Eric ready Thorne. ready for it? I, right. I'm ready for it. So I don't know if they're ready for it, I don't but know. I'm ready for it. I have been a Christian now for about four years. All right? So not very long. Um, my life prior to that, growing up, I grew up in a very broken home. Um, father was out of the picture. Um, mother was, you know, in and out of some things herself. And, um, yeah, just a lot of bad situations. Uh, grew up, lost my spleen and my gallbladder when I was 10. Um, never found them. Never found them. Yeah, they're Somebody. gone. Yeah. 
knows? Somebody right. in a parking lot somewhere yeah. is like, I wonder who this spleen yeah. wants to. I didn't get any money from it either. <laughs> so, hey, you know. That's another going. thing we have in common, you know, the absence of major organs. Uh, there you go. Yeah. I'm missing a kidney. I know where mine's at, though. Hey, high five. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, anyways, um, you know, not to go into too much detail of, of childhood and things like that, um, I wanted to get out of that situation of growing up in a broken home. So I worked at a very young, very young age to save up money to get out of my house. I mean, I put money above everything. I met my wife when I was, like I said, 15, mentioned that earlier. Um, her name is Amanda. She is beautiful, lovely, <laughs> God-fearing woman. Um, and she's always been a believer. And I mean, for many of those years, she's tried to witness to me. And it never just, it never was, you know. Like, I was more concerned about working, making money, um, trying to get to a higher status to make more money. Um, and did you find that, like, her... Her sharing of her faith with you was mm-hmm. that like a shut up kind of a thing, or I mean, oh, I that's was, nice that you believe yeah. that, or yeah, I was never rude about it, right? You know, because for example, like we I mean, get, it's kind of a benefit, though. I mean, you know, she's got to behave, right? Uh, yeah, there you go. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to go there. But anyways, <laughs> like for example, right? We'd, Lady Thorne, if you're watching. <laughs> we'd get in the car and she'd have Caleb going and I'd hit the button to turn it on something else. It's like, I don't want none of that, right? So anyways, um, it just got to an overwhelming point. I uh, rose very high into my position, made tons and tons of money. And eventually though just couldn't handle the stresses and the things that was is coming upon health wise so i decided to go back to the field instead of being in management okay um instantly turned down like thirty thousand dollars uh with salary and like i said at the time we had you know that's a lot of thousand dollars a lot yeah. yeah had three kids at the time and another one on the way um so going to that kind of pay decrease was another like it was just a huge burden, right? But I just couldn't take what I was doing at the time anymore. So, like I said, I went back out to the field, and I so I do work on HVAC. Um, <laughs> at this particular point, it was dial three nine seven for Eric. <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Anyways, so this particular time it was January, and I was going to install a furnace at a man's house. Okay, and. Went and knocked on his door, and the old man answered his door. Like, when he, when, he, when he answered the door, there was just something very different about him. And at first, it's like, man, this dude's really happy, right? It's the teen spirit. It's the, yeah, okay. But he's like, he's really too, happy. It's too old of a reference. But he's there. like, okay, yeah, I, don't, I don't know it. So anyways, like, he was just glowing kind of like, you know? And now knowing now what it was, it was joy. But anyways, he invites me into his home. And shows me to where his furnace is, and I'm uninstalling things from his furnace. I'm, I remember I'm up on a up on a step ladder, right, and I'm taking things off. And this guy, he's standing right here. <laughs> and the whole time, though, he's talking about Jesus, right. And in my head, I'm like, dude, shut up. <laughs> like I don't want to hear this. I just want to get this done so I can go home, right. <laughs> But during that whole time he's talking, he's <laughs> Did not... he ever, like, take advantage and be like, Speaking of furnaces, you're going to burn in hell! <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing like that. Oh, he didn't do that and That's what I was saying. Like, he wasn't... That was a golden opportunity. Yeah. I don't know. He might have missed that. Well, that's the thing. He wasn't preaching at me, okay? He was telling me how Jesus had saved his life hmm. from the man that he used to be. And, like, if he didn't... If Jesus didn't have come to him, you know, didn't come to him then, he would have been in hell. Um, but, man, he just... <laughs> the love and the passion that he had for Jesus was unlike anything I've ever seen before. Mm. I mean, it, man, it, it, it was, it was, it was intoxicating if that makes any sense. <laughs> okay. Um, I remember coming down from the ladder and ended up talking to him a little bit and he had lots of information, you know, for me that just, it felt right. Even though I did not accept Christ at that moment. I didn't. Um, <laughs> I went home. Or did you? Not at that moment. Yeah, not at that moment. Because I remember going home and telling my wife about it. 
And knowing the you know the Lord now, I already know He told her to hold the brakes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we just probably went, somewhere inside she's like, oh yeah, because I know <laughs> like she has witnessed me for at that point. I think it was you know. <laughs> goodness gracious i have no idea so many years right and i think you know she even said at one point she gave up she just didn't think it ever was going to be you know um and so i know like i said the lord told her to put the brakes on it so he didn't put out that little flame that was just set you know um a couple days it went by and i told her i think i want to check out a church so she's like okay well where do you want to go? I was like, mm-hmm. well, let's let's go to the church where you you know where you do your your mops thing, and so we. So get, she's a janitor. Yes. <laughs> mops, mothers of preschoolers. There we go. There you go. <laughs> so, anyways, Daniel. I, I always insert something like that in his testimony because he says mops like everybody's like, oh, okay. that's good. She goes there and yeah. mops. <laughs> yeah, mops the floor. Plus, so, we want to promote these wonderful women's ministries. No, for sure, definitely. Yeah. The mothers of preschoolers, I've heard so much good about that. Never yeah. attended, for some odd reason myself personally, but I've heard Maybe lots of good things about to the do with <laughs> something. <laughs> right? <you're saying. laughs> it's because I don't have a preschooler. Uh, that's why. Okay, that's that's the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, so we go to, her, you know, we go to the church, and... Man, I, the best way I describe it, I tell people, I really think that was Satan's one of Satan's last attempts to try to, mm. to to grab me because when we went, the sermon was about paying off the church, which there's nothing wrong with that, you know, and tithing and things like that. There's nothing wrong with that. But where I held money at that point in my life, there was a problem with it. All right. <laughs> right? Yeah. To me. Right? Uh, um, <laughs> so, you know, we leave, and she's like, oh, how'd you like church? And I'm like, eh. You know, it was church. Let's see. How do I say real nicely that I hated it? Yeah. Stop. Sure, right. <laughs> but I was, the Lord was not done. Right. Yeah. He had, man. So about <laughs> two, three weeks later, my, my second oldest son, which would have been five at the time, he was going to a preschool called Little Blessings Daycare. Okay. Um, it's like a preschool church thing. And he would come home and he would be talking about Jesus. Like he had so much like love and passion and like this glow, just like this old man had when he was talking about it. <laughs> it was insane. Right? I'm sitting back and like this little kid is sitting over here talking about how much he loves Jesus. And I'm like, something's up. Like, I am missing something. <laughs> like, what is going on here? Like, this five-year-old kid and this 78-year-old man have mm. no idea who they are, but there's something so similar about them. Yeah. So similar, right? So I tell Amanda, I'm like, hey, I think I want to try this church thing out one more time, okay? She's like, all right, well, well where are you going to go? I'm like, well, let's go to Park Chapel. You know, that's, that's where Caden's going to Little Blessings and... She's like, Park Chapel in Greenfield, Indiana, 317. Yeah. <laughs> you can look it up on the internet. <laughs> We're just plugging everything All today. kinds of it's things tonight. Eric's HVAC, the yeah. mops, the shirts, it. whatever. Yep. So anyways, you guys type it in on Facebook. We'll it. plug yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, we, we go to you know we go to Park Chapel, sign the kids up for the daycare stuff, we go drop the kids off, and um, their second service, they have... It, they have like a, how would you say, it? contemporary, like sure. new modern kind of thing, like worship yeah. over in the so gym. So some churches have like the traditional yeah. and then the contemporary. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So they have that in in their in their gym section where we have like fold out chairs, maybe three, four hundred chairs, maybe I don't know, somewhere around there. Well, we can tell somebody doesn't volunteer at Park Chapel, otherwise you know exactly how Not many. Not in that area, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> That's the first ministry you get drafted into is the chair ministry. Tell me about it. Like, when I first started, yeah. Anyways, We'd like to make you a, a chairman at this church. That's a whole other story. <laughs> Let's finish this one first. Right. Uh, sure. Yeah. Rose, we can't leave these people hanging. Eric's, you know, he's lost, heathen, reprobate. That's right. Yep. Still missing yep. something. Yep. And Just, you know, wretched sinner up to this point. All right. Uh-huh. So I tell a man, I'm like, hey, I'm going to sit in the back. I don't want nobody to see me. 
I remember it like vividly. I don't want nobody to see me. Like I don't want nobody to recognize me, nothing, right? So we sat in the back and the worship band comes out and everyone stands up. So I just go with the crowd, you know, I'm standing up and they're, they start playing this song called Good Father, right? And they have a left screen and a right screen. And I'm looking up at the left screen and Jesus came to me. Mm. And he told me how much he loved me. <laughs> and like he hugged me. I mean, it was the first time in my life I've ever felt love, like true, true love. And he told me how good of a father I was because of the father. Wow. I mean... You're going to do this to me again. I, I heard you give this testimony so many times that every time it's just like, woo! <laughs> you know, like, it was undescribable what happened, you know? I mean, it was just... Obviously, I was crying, emotional. My wife clearly just... Like, whoa. <laughs> you know? And, man... Like after this that, is, just to, just to clarify, you yeah. didn't actually physically see a Jesus or right, anything yeah. like that. It was right. more of the spiritual presence exactly, of the yeah. Father and for sure, it. yeah, all yeah. that, yeah. And kind of just like that, you read out of Acts and that Damascus Road experience yeah. that Paul encountered with Jesus. Like that's one of my favorite books out of Scripture because that's the best way to explain what happened to me in that yeah. moment. Just the glory of God, just yeah. I mean, just <laughs> like that. And I mean, rocked my socks, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Knock you off your yeah. donkey. After that, man, just completely changed, like, the father that I was to my children, right? I was able to become the spiritual leader of my home. Got, you know, involved into different things in the church not the chair ministry <laughs> but, so they haven't made you chairman huh yeah look not don't the don't bite on that right it's, it's a trick <laughs> but you know i've heard it said best like this jesus doesn't only change you he changes what you want to do mm -hmm. and oh my gosh like ever since then it's like how can i not tell people about jesus right he you got a little bit of that joy though oh man <laughs> like he put it on my heart to want to go to school right to eventually Hopefully, if it's in his will to become a preacher, pastor, that's that's something that's on my heart. It is. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, Eric's like, maybe if it's his will. I mean, I've never... <laughs> seeing that love that this man had in my son, and then when Jesus just... This Holy Spirit, right? Man, I was able to love my wife completely different. Mm. You know? I do. And take that relationship to a whole nother level that I never even thought was possible. And in, and through this process, like to see where the Lord has been taking me, it's been really neat to see him grow her. That's been, that's really cool. Like that's something I would have never even thought I'd get to see, but like looking at it, like, whoa, seeing the things that he's revealing to her and showing her, it just blows my mind. Hmm. It's like, whoa, okay, lady. <laughs> Break it. You know what I mean? Um, I've got to baptize my wife. Wow. Um, my two oldest sons accepted Jesus on their own term. Like, they, you know, I got to baptize them. That's awesome. Um, I still have two. I'm praying, that, you know, that makes that decision. Yeah. I'm not going to make it for them. It's something that they need to do. Sure. Um, but, man, like, I can't. If anyone's never read, um, there's a book called Blue Like Jazz. Have you ever heard of it? I have heard of it, yeah. The author's name is Donald Miller, and he starts off the book by saying basically how he hates jazz. He hates it, right? And as he goes on, he's going to some event or he's going somewhere. I don't remember exactly where he's going, but there's this man outside playing the saxophone. He's playing, some, he's playing jazz music, and he's just so in love with what he's doing. And Donald Miller says that at that time, he fell in love with jazz music. Hmm. And he said that sometimes you have to see someone to see someone love something so you know how to love it yourself. Wow. That's good. Oh, it's fantastic. That's good. Yeah. So this guy coming along, you're just normal day at work, HVAC, mm -hmm. doing an install. Yeah. Lo and behold, Jesus had a... Oh, yeah, a, a divine intervention. <laughs> little testimony session. Right. 
just for Eric, yeah. just to get the ball rolling, just and to praise the Lord. Nudge you in the right direction. I actually got to do another job for him today. I'm not seeing. Did him you in, really? Yeah. I'm not. You know what would really be awesome years. would be if we had a picture. We that do. would be great. Look at that. <laughs> and That's there him. he is. Yep. There's the man who, uh, Mr. Kramer, shared his testimony and made all that difference. Wow. Look at that. You're smiling now. I am smiling. It's, it's obviously not from the uh, from the first meeting. This is from later on. So <laughs> when I met him, he was going through uh, cancer. Doctors gave him like six to eight months to live. It was an incurable cancer. Wow. And we are now four years later. Wow. Cancer free. And in and spite of that cancer, he's... he's uh, he praises the Lord all just, the time for it. Like, he just oh praises Jesus. Hey, I want you to check out our comments right now. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, are hey, you watching this, Josh? Josh Long. I was literally talking about you we earlier. We were just <laughs> talking about you before we hit the record button. That's awesome. That right there is a God moment. Yeah, it is. It really is. Praise the so, Lord. <laughs> That That's is so awesome. awesome. We love you too, Josh. We really do. Yep. Um, wishing God's best in your life tonight. Um, so yeah, tonight's episode is all about somebody testify. Um, and Eric, I want to thank you so much for sharing your testimony. Mm -hmm. And I, I understand now why you're so eager yeah. to share that. Oh, um, yeah. You can't have something like that happen and not like tell yeah. anyone about it. It's like you got to tell I, everybody. I love hanging out <laughs> with guys like you. You know, my testimony is so much different being brought up in a Christian background mm. and um, being brought, and I, don't worry, we're not going to get into all that. But it's just, it's so different. Yeah. And so I'm always interested to hear that story about that person who didn't know Christ and it's just like one day Jesus is kind of like, yeah. hey, <laughs> yeah. Been waiting for you to get here. We right. got some things to talk about. So, <laughs> and if anyone ever has any questions about more details, things about childhood and stuff like that, I'm more than happy to answer them. Just message me on Facebook or uh, reach out to me, thorny for the Lord at gmail.com. Oh my gosh, are we really? It good? will take off. <laughs> <laughs> So T H O R N E Y T H O R N E Y Thorny for yeah the Lord because every rose has its thorn. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I could play that on the guitar, but we won't because mm. then we'll get banned. So sure. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. I am the current reigning. Ah, uh, okay. Beard champion. Hey, okay, he might be the that beard champion. Happened. All right. <laughs> so look, all right, for real, he maybe have a better beard right now. <laughs> but one of the first gifts that Jesus gave me was my beard. So wow. take that. He's still waiting on his sandals. I'm just we saying. Know, that's the two things Jesus gives you: the beard. I'm just and saying. Sandals. I could not grow. I could not grow a beard <laughs> before the Lord, and I've always wanted to. Right? Like I always wanted to. You can ask my wife if you don't believe me, because it's like oh, I'm always frustrated with it. <laughs> you know, Jesus came. I accepted Jesus. Boom! Had a beard. I mean, not like instantly, but it started growing. <laughs> I was like, thank you so much, Lord. That's impressive. One more benefit to Jesus, I guess. Is that a guarantee? A beard. Like everybody gets a beard? Every, well, I don't know. Sounds like we're going to lose a lot of ladies, just to let you know. We're going to have trouble. But maybe they don't want one. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yep. <laughs> well, we want to thank you guys for uh, sitting in with us tonight. I just want to encourage you. Share your Christian testimony. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, man, I've got more than 40 years of Christianity under mm -hmm. my belt. You got more than four. And I will tell you right now, Eric's testimony is just as valid, just as sincere, just as relatable to anyone as anything that I could say. And I only say it to say, I know a lot of times people first coming to Christ, they mm -hmm. may feel like, you know, well, I just don't know how to share my testimony. How do I share my testimony? Look, it's your testimony. Yeah. It's what Christ has done for you. Yep. So it's just that simple. Share what Christ has done for you. And um, how long was it before um, Mr. Kramer ever knew that his testimony made a bit of difference in your life? Oh, man. I mean, he, you you left there that day, and he was probably like, man, I probably annoyed that kid to death. Yeah, but, I mean, ah, you know. Maybe a, maybe a couple months, maybe. Yeah. Because we exchanged phone numbers. Oh, you did? Oh, we did, yeah. And like, yeah, great. Keeping the contact with him. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So a couple months later, you're kind of like, hey, remember that Jesus yeah. thing? Yeah, called him, and I was like, hey, about it. guess what? I'm in the family. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, I love that. 
And he's like, praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's so awesome. Eric and I are here if you guys have any questions or anything. Yep. He's thorny for the Lord at gmail.com. Yep. I'm just Brother Daniel with Man of Minutes. That's all you get from me. Reach out to us here. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Eric, anything else you'd like to add in before we say goodbye to the folks tonight? I think you should close us in prayer. All right, let's do that. Yep. Father God, we want to thank you for the wonderful privilege you get give us of sharing in the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. The truth is, um, we're all part of that great testimony of faith. We're all part of what God is, uh, what Jesus is calling to the Father. So, um, Lord, I pray that you would make us bold in our testimony, ready to share our witness with the world who is in such a desperate need of that testimony and that witness. Thank you for Brother Eric. Thank you that you called him into the family. Thank you Mm -hmm. that you've made him my friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, look at that. Man of customs. I yeah, like it. I like it. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know how to close the program? I don't know how to close it. Are you serious? It's on the shirt. Be good and have fun. And do it in that order. <laughs> Lord bless.